Let's master buttonholes on the Fav Creative Icon 2. Now there are tons of buttonholes in this machine and you might wonder what some of them are actually used for. Hi, I'm Sarah from SewingMastery.com and we have videos on the Fav Creative Icon so you can master this machine from beginning to end. So diving into the world of buttonholes. Now I do like a good decorative buttonhole. I'll often use those to weave some ribbon through as we've done on the Fop Stitching Cosmos. I had some fun with that particular block and we do have information about this course in the description below. But first off, there are multiple ways to finding your buttonholes. They are in menu one, the utility menu, and they are on page three. So as you select a buttonhole, you can touch the eye for information, to find out which type of buttonhole it is and for what use. We can also touch the question mark and then touch the picture of the buttonhole to see what it's used for. I mentioned other ways to find buttonholes in this machine. So if you start with the little book with the bookmark, we can come to techniques and tutorials and we are looking for some of the sewing techniques so you're looking for the garment techniques and in the first one called closures, we have different types of closures, including the automatic buttonhole, how to sew on buttons, which will be our next video that we'll do, uh, zippers, invisible zippers, separating zippers, or a front fly zipper. So in each of these tutorials, yes, I'll clear my ongoing work, it will actually bring up the step-by-step -step instruction, including a video that you can watch. So if you ever see this blue video camera icon, touch it and you will find that that will start playing the video. Now it will stop in a section, but if you want to play the whole one, touch the little icon to the far left side and it will play the entire segment. Now you can always pause this and come back or enjoy the rest of the steps as you approach using each of the different ones. So sometimes there's more than one video in the instructions. But what I wanna show you is content. If you touch content, it is gonna show you that our stitch can be easily selected and pulled up on screen. Okay, next, we have a button that we have pulled out that we wanna make a button hole for. To tell the machine what size of button we're using, place it at the zero mark and measure in metric how big it is. So on this one, I see that we are approximately 11 millimeters long. If you go to stitch edit, we'll be able to type in the length of the button, but we can't just yet because we haven't put the buttonhole foot on. So let's talk about the buttonhole foot. Uh, you do find that it is labeled as 5A. We also see a recommendation for stabilizer, which I've already pulled out, and that the IDT has been disengaged. So make sure that you're not trying to put this on with that walking foot uh, pulled down down and in place. Once you've placed the foot on the machine, you will then reach behind the machine and find where the plug plugs in. Once we plug the plug in, you will find that we can now type in the length of the button. Did you see how that changed once I plugged in the foot? The slit length is what we're going to type in to be 11 millimeters. We also have the option, if I touch the toggle switch, to adjust the density. How thick do you want this to be? And depending on your thread choice, you may want to increase or decrease it. Always do a sample to see what you actually like. You can adjust the width. So again, you're adjusting how wide those stitches are and you can control that. But start with some of the basic settings of these buttonholes. Now there's one more thing that we need to look at before we start because on screen you are noticing that the orange arrow is pointing up. That means that it's gonna start at the lower part and stitch away from us first. So when we mark our fabric for our starting point, we need to know ahead of time which direction the buttonhole is going to stitch. I've marked a starting place so this will give you a better idea of how you would line it up on an actual project. Now you see the red arrow on that foot. 
And you see on the silver guide on the side, a notch for said red arrow. So those two need to line up prior to you lowering the foot onto the fabric. So I'm gonna position the mark directly underneath my needle. That's how I will get it to start where I want it to start. The last thing people ask is, what do I do with this thread? So since this foot doesn't have like a little groove to slide it under the foot, you could manually put it down there. Now, once you do one button hole, this thread is under the foot for you. It's just the first time is when you have to kind of hold onto it or at least kind of mind where it is. But once you're ready to start, you can lower down that presser foot. My line is not exactly where I thought it was gonna be, so I'm gonna push that button again bring the foot up just a little bit to adjust my starting point. And you can use that start stop button and it will stitch the whole entire buttonhole for you. So it's gonna stitch all the way back. And do notice I've added some stabilizer underneath my fabric to really give those speed dogs something to grip as it stitches. Now touch the scissor button and this will finish our buttonhole. And it's always amazing in class, students say, gosh, I didn't realize buttonholes were so easy to do. And especially when you can tell it how long you want it and then how easy that's going to make your projects, they start to rethink buttonholes aren't as hard and they might hopefully look to put them on their future projects instead of avoiding them. We've talked about you stitching out all your decorative stitches and I know buttonholes aren't as exciting, but make sure you slip in a page of a sample of each buttonhole stitched because they're gonna look a lot more fun than what you realize. Maybe put in some variegated thread and have some extra surprises when you sew them. By the way, if you stitched out all 18 buttonholes that are on the machine, I guarantee you will understand how this machine sews them and how easy it is. Now next up, we are going to talk about how to stitch the buttons in place with the button sew on stitch.